All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Notary Titans for Tuesday, July 14th. We're excited to be here with you. My name is Bill Soroka. I'm the founder of notarycoach.com and the Sign and Thrive Notary Training Course and Community. I'm here with our co host the titans of the industry, the notary industry, Laura Buer. Laura, are you still with us? I'm right here. Hey, Laura Buer. She's founder of CoachMeLaura.com. Laura, what's going on and what are you excited about this week? Oh, my God. It is, well, you know, the whole month is a big celebration for me. So as some of you know, I celebrated my 60th birthday this last Saturday. And it was best birthday ever. Lots of surprises. My son's girlfriend made an incredible cake. I posted on Facebook. Those of you who wished me a happy birthday on my Facebook posting, thank you so much. That was so kind of you. Those who reached out to me from LinkedIn to wish me a happy birthday, thank you so much. That was wonderful. I spent most of Sunday responding to people. <laughs> it took quite a bit of time uh, to thank everybody. Is Samantha on the call today? Samantha ben Bentano? Where is she? She not here Samantha today. I went to my office. I guess she's not here. But today I went to my office to get my mail, and um, there was a box, a little box there for me, and in it was a great card and a little brownie and birthday cake. Nice. <laughs> now I just want to mention. Of course, I got it. So delish. I'll have it. But um, what a great marketing idea to send a little sweetness with your communication. Just thought I'd share that. She's so creative. That was fabulous. Good job, Samantha. Yay. Awesome. I love when somebody just thinks out of the, out of the box. Yeah. So definitely. anyways, so the, this last couple of days have just been fabulous. And I'm looking forward to the rest because, you know, it's a decade. So like I get the whole month. One day cannot capture it all. Right. It's just overflowing. Uh, so it's all good. And I'm excited to be with you guys today. Awesome. Well, happy birthday. That's Thank awesome. You. And I love that you're celebrating the entire month. 7-Eleven. Love yeah. it. And then our other co-host, Carol Ray, founder of the famous Notary2Pro.com. Carol, thank you so much for being here. What's going on with you? What are you excited about this week? And you're muted. I'm trying to unmute you, but I can't. There you go. Okay, I'm unmuted. <laughs> Actually, we've got so many things going on that I am really excited about. Sometimes I'm not, you know, over exuberant about what's going on. But uh, I'm very excited because I've got both of my daughters working with me now. And they have pretty much relegated me to, to being the mentor. I'm spending a great deal of time mentoring my students. But we're revamping things. Barbara, who has been my go-to for all of these years, almost 12 years, web designer. She does all of our websites and everything. She's revamping things. We're changing the way our testing is being done, uh, effective as of tomorrow. Um, we've added some, some things to the, we're, we're revamping the actual the course. It's going to be updated again. We did it a few years ago, uh, just bringing it, into the future now. And so I'm very excited about that. It's a huge, huge project. And, um, and we're really excited because our students are just doing fantastic. They're doing great. And I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot of changes that are gonna be made. I'm also gonna be doing a lot of little snippet videos for different trainings that I've been wanting to do that I haven't had time to do that we're gonna be putting in the library. So I'm excited about what's coming up in the next few months. That's awesome, congratulations. I know that's a, it's a huge undertaking and I'm so glad that you're, you have an amazing team, a loving, trusting team that you can put that Very in. Very much so. Yeah, awesome. And guys, uh, real quick before um, we move on, I, we've got a, a special, uh, just a, a chat um, from a guest of Carol Ray's that we're gonna talk about here in just a second. but. I also want to share what I'm excited about, and that is um, the webinar that we have next Monday. It's completely free of charge, but it's designed for notaries that really um, want to get to the next level, and really want to understand how to effectively use a customer relationship management tool, a CRM, 
We're going to do a full on training and we're going to introduce you to a new collaboration with an amazing company that makes one that is so much simpler to use than the others that are out there that are tend to be so robust and so overwhelming that nobody ever uses them. So what that's going to do is it's just going to teach the value of your customers. Guys, the customers are your most valuable asset in your business and staying in touch with them will give you the sustainability. And what that means is a business that will outlast no matter what goes on in the economy when you stay in touch and you cultivate those deeper, longer relationships. So we've got that going on on Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific time. The link to register, like I said, is totally free. It's in the chat window right there for you. And we'll meet, hopefully see you on Monday. So uh, Carol Ray, you have a guest who wants to talk about or share a little bit of her perspective on remote online notarization and in particular notarize, right? Yes, I do. I had a very interesting conversation. It started off a mentoring appointment this morning and it led to this. I think that everyone on this call is concerned as most people are in the industry about what's going on with the remote online notarizations and everything. Uh, we have made a decision that I'm going to introduce her, but it's going to be anonymous. She's going to have her, uh, her vocal available, but not her visual. So are you out there? You want to speak? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay, good. Uh, so she's from the uh, Houston, I mean, uh, Dallas area, and she started working with Notarize. This was a company, very quick background. I've, I've said this before, but a lot of you may not have heard this. Several years ago, I was very much against this remote online notarization. Uh, somebody came out from Boston to my home. He was one of the software developers for Notarize. The state of Virginia had just passed it, governor, all that, and they were going to be using Notarize as the, the provider to start online remote notarization. I was very vocal in my opinion about being against it, especially duress and all that stuff. They came to my home. The idea was that they sell me on it and they wanted to use Notary to Pro graduates to start the program, which they did. It's now evolved where I'm kind of concerned, very much concerned actually, because I'm hearing that some of these companies are turning this into a, an employment situation. So I was speaking to this young lady today and she has some things that she will tell us about that's going on, at least in the state of Texas, with regard to the employment situation and the people that want to continue to be independent notary, mobile notary signing agents. So I'm gonna let you tell them what you kind of talked to me about this morning. It's very interesting. So I did start out as um, an employee and um, they have benefits and everything is great, but as time has kind of gone on, um, I kind of talked to some of the other notaries and basically a lot of notaries have left. Um, I'm working, I'll pretty much say afternoon, evening shift. So it really leaves me no time. I was talking to Carol because that's why I reached out to her for the mentoring because I'm trying to build my business out of it to get out of the employee. I don't have really have time to even do both because of the hours I work and the hours are not necessarily flexible. Um, other notaries have left because of, um, you know, there's no flexibility for it. And so now they're actually um, going from employee to strictly independent. So maybe not necessarily firing or if they can't find a reason, you know, to get rid of employees, whenever employees leave the employee side, they're actually only, only going to do independent um, work for notaries going forward. And so, um, again, that's kind of concerning to a lot of notaries. Some notaries have stated that they really only took the position to get the benefits, but if they're getting away from the employee side, um, I'm not sure, but I'm, I would assume if you're independent, then benefits would no longer be available. So it's just kind of been a, you know, a rough road. I've known several 
notaries that have left because they, you know, just said it's not flexible enough and, you know, that's just, just not what they, you know, want to do going forward. So that's why I'm looking to, you know, build so I can exit as well. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. I found that very interesting this morning. I'm wondering if Matt has something to say. Sure. Thanks for thanks for uh, calling out, Carol. Um, you know, it's it's it, we had this lemming-like rush to RON earlier this year due to, the, due to the pandemic, and I think a lot of notaries are now finding out what um, what I had been warning about is actually true, which is that um, yes, this technology might be convenient uh, for mortgage, mortgage closings, etc. But at the same time, we all have to remember, big tech is in the business for themselves. They're not in the business for us or our consumers. Uh, you know, they need, to, they need to make money at this to, to satisfy their investors. And uh, the way they're doing that is by way of um, notary fees. I have heard that, you know, if you work on the independent side of Notarize, you uh, end up walking with only five bucks per transaction. For, and uh, that's not worth it for anybody. Uh, and then also what these companies do, and, and uh, they'll deny it, but it says right in their own privacy policy that you have to sign to, to use that platform is they are mining and sharing and selling and marketing data. So uh, that's, that's what big tech does. This is a big data play. And this is really scary, folks, because, you know, with traditional notarization, do we, do we capture personal information? Sure, we do. But it's, you know, under lock and key. These companies not only are capturing your personal ID information, but they're also capturing a copy of your documents. And most importantly, your facial features, your retinas, and your voice. And once those things are hacked, and they will be, you can't go out and get new ones like you can a new password. So I caution the notary community, you know, if you wanna dabble in this and check it out and, and do it, that's fine. But just remember, there are significant downside risks to the current iteration of this technology. Great, thank you, Matt. That is definitely worth um, always keeping in mind, of course. There's going to be so much uh, coming forward on this. Um, as things get challenged, challenged in courts, as there are data breaches, which inevitably, inevitably something's going to be happening. The other thing that I think I find really curious is, as Matt mentioned, there's this huge rush and push to get this launched. And I can tell you guys, talking to notaries all over the country, talking to the Secretary of States in, all of, in many states, they are not ready. This, this country is not ready for Ron. So if you have been feeling anxiety about the uh, future of your industry, I have never felt more confident that being a mobile notary and loan signing agent is stable and secure because there are so many things that are interfering now. And I, I mentioned this a couple times before, but we've got rumors now of these secondary market investors no longer not interested in buying notes and mortgages that have been done via Ron. They haven't been challenged in court yet. They don't know if they're going to get upheld. And that's a too risky of an investment. What that means, guys, is total opportunity for us. So stick with what we're doing here. Uh, and now, without further ado, I'm going to move on from Ron, if that's all right, unless somebody has a question. We want to get to as many questions as possible, guys. So here's what we're doing this time. We're going to mix it up a little bit. One question per person per time. If you have multiple questions, it's okay. Ask one and then get back in line. That way everybody gets a chance to ask their question. So you're gonna raise your hand. That's the best way for me to be able to see who has questions. And then also when you have your question, let's be um, direct in your question and tell us what state you're from, first of all. So if you're in Illinois, just say, hi, I'm in Illinois and this is my question. Just real short and simple. And then if Laura, Carol, or myself needs a little more background or we need to dig a little deeper, we'll ask you some probing questions on that one. Everybody sound good on board with that? Good, I can't hear you, so I assume so. <laughs> All right, great. So we've got a couple of questions already from the get-go. Yes, we are recording this. It is posted to at least my YouTube channel. We have the replay page, and I think Carol and Notary to Pro and Laura also share it. So. It's at, it'll be out there for sure. 
Okay, Tina Cavaco, thank you so much for being here. Feel free to unmute, tell us what state you're from and ask us your question. Hi guys, I'm from Florida and I'm just starting out and I went to try and do like my Google ads this, this morning and it really, I come from a 31 year medical background. Like I can break down a medical chart like nobody's business, but this business is all new to me. Can you recommend any starting program for someone who's never done, regardless if it's loan signing or anything, just a business program? Hmm, great question. Um, Laura, Carol, any suggestions on that? Well, I, I, I need a little clarity about what kind of business program you're looking for. Just anything like introduction, because she was asking me like, how many, how many appointments did I want to get a week and how many calls was I looking for and what's my business plan and how much was I looking to make per week? And there's so much variety in this field. Um, but just like planning and that kind of thinking is something I'm not used to. So I was just looking at something basic to a small business startup. Yeah, good question. Um, when it, if it's really general, I don't have, I mean, I've been through just about everything that you can imagine. But I can also, I mean, I, I have to suggest Sign and Thrive too, because in my course, everything that I teach is because I learned it somewhere. I either learned right. it from doing the businesses or I learned it in different courses. Okay. And I really talk about planning the big picture. I talk about managing your business. I talk about having a vision. I talk about, you know, mapping that out and reverse engineering your goals. So knowing where you mm -hmm. want to go and coming backwards. So exactly. you know exactly what to do when you wake up in the morning every okay. day. Okay. So that would be my suggestion. Now, uh, Laura, Laura's big into uh, Kaizen and con constant continuous improvement as well. Laura, did you come across any courses that might be good for a, a, a small business person? You know, um, gosh, I, I hate to think of it on the spot because I, I'm not good at pulling names and authors uh, right off the top of my head like that. Uh, but I would like to share with you, Tina, and what I... Uh, what I'd like you to do, if you're willing, is to pop me an email because I will go through. I think I do have a couple I'd like to share. Um, and my email is my last name, Bewer, B-I-E-W-E-R, at sbcglobal.net. Great. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. No and then check the chat, too, because we got some suggestions. Yeah, in there I'm going to go well. back and look at that. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Great question, Tina. I oh, like that yeah, you think score. like that. Score. And I want to talk about score in, in particular because score is uh, retired entrepreneurs helping other people. Uh, there's been some challenges with that. And just like any other business, there's going to be some naysayers. And sometimes retired entrepreneurs are thinking 30 years ago and they don't see recognize opportunity. So if you run into challenges there, and we've had a lot of them actually across the country where people just say, you can't build a business as a noble notary, it's just not possible. Uh, it is possible and that we're here. So you have to kind of break through those barriers sometimes first. Great question, thank you, Tina. Neil, thank you for being here. Would you like to unmute? Tell us what state you're from and ask your question. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm calling from Phoenix in Arizona. And I wanted to ask Bill, how can I get involved with your signing company? How can I sign up for your signing service? Great question. So I am a very informal. I'm a really, I'm pretty small beans in the grand scheme of things, even though we're running with our heads cut off right now. But um, I do not have a registration process. I, I default to the students in my Sign and Thrive program. We have an amazing core team in Phoenix. Of course, we're always looking for more. Uh, so it really, I start with Sign and Thrive, and then I, I grow and expand from there. But I use Carol's Next, I use her Notary to Pro list, and then I will go to signingagent.com if I can't find uh, a, a resource there. So what I, t I don't, I really don't take applications outside of Sign and Thrive. That's the, the bottom line. But I also do not encourage you to join Sign and Thrive just to get signings from me because I probably will not give you volume that you might be expecting from that. Does that help? Yes. If you're committed to personal development and you wanna continue learning, jump in, join us, build a relationship with me, hit me up every now and then, stay in touch and you'll probably get some signings. Thank you, Neil. All right, thank you. Celicia Young-Jones, thank you so much. Would you like to unmute? Hey everybody, uh, greetings from uh, thunderstormy Jacksonville, Florida. All right. I am asking about Google My Business 
uh, Google Ads, SEO. I mean, you can't get through to Google right now because of COVID. I mean, and you can't navigate. Do we have any experts out there that can help us do some stuff on that? Yeah, great question. Um, I'll, I'll go first on this one, if that's all right, Laura and Carol. I do have, um, we've got some amazing resources, number one, especially for Google My Business in the group. And already Matt is saying that he can possibly help. So you might want to reach out to those individuals. Uh, there, if you're part of Sign and Thrive, guys, we have a 12-week SEO course that's in phase five to help mold that stuff out. And then, you know, here's the challenge with SEO. It changes all the time. And you get a lot of shysters out there that will charge you 500 to 1200 bucks to set up Google My Business, which you can do for free. So you got to be really careful when you're looking for an expert there. What I will offer you too, guys, is that we have partnered with Green Monkey Marketing and we will have a full SEO course for notaries coming out in August. So I don't know if you can hang out that long, but if not, I recommend some of the um, people inside this course that um, like April San Miguel on my YouTube channel, she's kind of figured out Google My Business. I know a lot of people have uh, and uh, as they post in chat, you can find them there. Laura, what about you? Have you heard any great resources for SEO? No, I, I can't say that I have because I've relied on the people who have built my website to help build that in for me. Uh, so, you know, my answer is I got a guy. <laughs> That's so here's how I feel either I'm an expert at something and when I'm not an expert at something then I go hire an expert at something right and I hire somebody else who knows what they're doing SEO is not my skill set so I hire it out excellent and I'm lucky enough to have Barbara uh -huh. yeah she excellent. builds all of our websites and does all that SEO stuff built-in team right there Thank you, Celicia. Thanks. All right, Crystal, thank you for being here. Would you like to unmute? Tell us what state you're from and ask your question. Yes, I will. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm from Virginia and I'm continuing to, um, to sign up with signing services. And I'm running into, um, I did one today with, Notar I'm sorry, Notary Cafe. And they're asking, and when I went to put in my credentials, there's a red sign that comes up and says, um, your, your privacy will not be protected. We're not responsible for it. Is that usually the way it is? And you all feel comfortable with going ahead and uploading your credentials, although they can't, um, I guess, be responsible for the privacy of your credentials, like your background check and your commission and all those things. Interesting situation. Anybody else running into that? Laura, Carol, can you speak to that? Well, I can tell you about Notary Cafe and why it's really important to be registered with them. I've never, ever had anybody tell me, because I do tell my students to sign up with them, uh, have their identity or any, any com anything compromised. But the reason that you need to sign up with them is that a little, a lot of people don't know this, but Notary Cafe for many years has created a software program for signing services, uh, especially, uh, helping them to guide them through the whole process. They actually, if you do a signing through a company who has that Notary Cafe software, they actually do the confirmation sheets. Uh, they can ge generate the checks to the notaries. They keep the accounting. They do all of that. So unless you're signed up with Notary Cafe, any of those companies that have that software cannot use you unless you are registered and have all of your information with Notary Cafe. And in, in my opinion, it's, it's a great company. They're, I've never seen anybody compromised in it. And it will get you work if you're signing up with companies who have that software. And they're good people. We're very okay. good people. Excellent. That's very helpful, Carol. Thank you. You're welcome. Laura, do you have anything on the security um, information? I'm signed up with them myself. I've never had issue. Uh, I like Notary Cafe because it's a very reasonable price. And I do work for companies that get my, they use that interface. And so everything gets pulled over from Notary Cafe for them. 
Uh, so I like it. It's pretty convenient as well. And I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, just because it hasn't been doesn't mean in the future it can't be. And those who promise to protect you, it can be. I mean, nothing really anymore is guaranteed. There are no guarantees about our information and safety when you're talking about the internet. Yeah, that's the, that was the exact point I was going to make is that security is almost uh, an imaginary thing right now. Yeah. Sometimes things, un, unbreakable things get penetrated sometime and uh, breached. So, uh, but I love that you're asking for it. I love that they even, you, you even noticed that because I think many right. of us would not have. Does that answer your question, Crystal? Yes, it does. Thank you all, all right. so much. Thanks for being here. All right, Jenny, thanks for being here. You want to unmute and ask your question? Tell us what your state you're in as well. Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm from um, California. Just really quickly, I wanted to get um, some opinions regarding um, copying uh, copies of borrower's IDs to be sent back with packets. Um, so recently, you know, I guess right now it's um, borrowers are not willing to, well, it, it can be a challenge, I guess, to get the paper copies if they don't have a printer at home or if they're working and they're not able to get them. Um, so if I give them the email, for example, to have them send them themselves, and that's what they choose to do if they, for whatever reason, can't provide a paper copy. Um, and they say they're going to do it, and then they don't do it. And then I get an email back saying that the borrower hasn't sent, you know, we don't have copies of the borrower's IDs. How much of that is our responsibility to go back and make sure that the borrowers do that? Because, you know, we're all busy, but I don't, if, if that's, I just, I guess I want an opinion on from y'all on how much of that is our responsibility if I've given them the information to send their I, copies of their IDs and it doesn't get done. Good question. Carol, do you have an opinion on this? Have to unmute myself. Yeah, this is a really difficult situation to be in because we're really not supposed to use our own devices to, to do this. There are programs that I know there's several out there. I'm not going to mention any of them. Somebody else can. But I, I really think we need to emphasize to people that they need to have several things. One of the situations comes up with applications when they give the notary a list of stuff that they need to get from the borrowers uh, when they get to their home. And I always tell my students, give them that list way ahead of time. If you have the time, have them have that stuff ready for you. And you have to stress to them how important one way or another that they have to provide you with a copy of their IDs. And they have to be responsible. Since we're not able to do that without getting ourselves into trouble uh, or putting ourselves in jeopardy, we have to put that responsibility back on between the lender and the borrowers. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't think we should have to step in and, and feel that it's our responsibility. I tend to agree with you, Carol, um, with, the, with the caveat that you have to communicate. So if, I, if I'm in a situation where the borrower cannot make a copy and I don't feel comfortable taking an image or and I don't have a secure way to upload, then I would communicate that to the closing agent and or the signing company just to let them know, here's the situation. I've given them the email. They said they would do it by such and such a time. And then that way everybody's on the same page. But if right. you spring it on that afterwards, it looks like you've missed it. And then they don't want to inconvenience their customer. Uh, so that, because it's technically it falls under your purview, at least for a certain period of time. So you just want to convey that to all parties involved. I might also add that it might be a good idea to carry a sheet with you that says you are responsible to provide your identification. Here is where you're supposed to send it and give them the information because you, if you tell them, well, it has to go back to the escrow officer or whoever it's to be sent to, it would be very helpful if they have that information. If you can give that to them, I'll let them know where it has to go and how you're going to send it there. Does that help, Jenny? Yeah, it does. I, I kind of felt the same way that if it doesn't get done and it, it, I just don't feel like it should be falling back on me. And I understand too that uh, they, they don't want to upset their customers, but I, I can't force somebody to, <laughs> to, to send, the, send the copy of the ID. 
Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, anytime you run into a situation like this, right, it, it, you always look at the big picture because you grinding your heels in the ground over this might cost you an entire relationship. So we might not be just talking about an inconvenience, inconvenient drive across town. We might be talking about a hundred thousand dollar a year client. I'm always thinking about that. Like, is, is this worth a fight right now? I pick my battles. Like if they, if for some reason they get weird and they want this, I'm going to go above and beyond just to get it done and push it away. Yeah. It doesn't feel fair. It doesn't feel like something I should do, but I'm not going to sacrifice the relationship a long-term relationship or something like this. If it becomes um, regular, then you can reevaluate, right? Because then your stomach starts getting in knots. Every time they call, you're like, oh gosh, what do they want now? Then that's a, a customer that maybe you can look at letting go or re reestablishing boundaries in that relationship. All right, great question, Jenny. Thanks for bringing that up. Donna Reed, thank you for being here. Would you like to unmute yourself? Tell us what state you're in and ask your question. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Donna. I am in Ohio. Uh, my question today is I'm going to be leaning more towards doing notary services and facilities. Um, I worked for quite a number of years um, in a county uh, jail system, and I'm quite comfortable working within it. And so my, I guess my question is actually for Laura. I recently signed up for your program but I'm anxious to get started because I haven't had a chance to get into the program. How do we introduce ourselves into that system? How do we get to the people who are gonna help us get in to serve? Right, so you know, it's, uh, it's not the person at that front desk. That's mm -hmm. not who calls me. It is family and friends of the inmate. So that is your typical, how do I get visible to those people? That is through my Facebook, my website, uh, through those searches, uh, 123notary.com, which is a directory. So those are the ways that they find me. Attorneys is the other way that I'm found. And of course, I've been building relationships with attorneys in different specialties. And another way has been through bail bond companies. So those are really the ways that that work comes to me. Okay, so what about the um, hospitals? The hospitals would be social workers and uh, director of nursing. And of course, I do talk about that in, in the program. Each one of those videos are an hour long, and I talk about who you want to reach out to and ideas about how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to get to it. I haven't had a chance to get to that yet. Um, I just recently moved out into the country, so I'm still trying to get settled and everything. But um, that's where I'm headed, and I will be getting into the program. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Great questions. And then Laura, if you don't mind, can we talk a little bit about what it's like right now as far as facility works and COVID? Yeah. So right now I can tell you that um, in California, getting into a jail uh, is probably not happening. There are two ways to get into a jail. Well, probably three when you're inside. But the <laughs> other two from the outside, one is family and friends and they go through one area which allows them to visit with a glass in between them. And they're on one side of the glass and the inmates on the other side of the glass. The way the notary gets in is through official business, which is where the attorneys get in, notaries get in, so that you're sitting in a room, in a chair, across the table from them, so that you can work with the journal, get thumbprints if needed, all of that. So right now, because COVID is so bad, outbreaks in facility work, that they will not allow a notary in on that side. And family members are having a hard time because I've got five jobs just on back order because I can't get in. And they're saying, but I can get in. Yes, you can get in, but there's a glass between you and there's no way for me to work with you. I can't work with the telephone and glass. It doesn't work that way. So right now is not a good time for jails. You're not gonna get in. Now, if you're in a, a Donna, what uh, state are you in? again? Ohio. Ohio. I don't know what COVID's like in Ohio. I don't know if you've got facilities that are in shutdown. So you, my, my recommendation is you call the facilities that you want to go to to find out how are they handling allowing official visitors in. Okay. Because it's a very different protocol than family and friends. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so you would, still I, Yeah, I would address it that way. Same thing with hospitals. A lot of hospitals, they don't want anybody coming in there. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So you would want to find out how about official visits where they need to sign and have notarized a document. Is there any accommodation for that or not? Same mm -hmm. thing with skilled facilities. Some skilled facilities, they'll roll that person right out to the front lobby, right mm -hmm. by the door. And you just mm -hmm. step in the door, you do it right there by the door in the lobby, and you don't go any further in. Or mm -hmm. they have, I've been to one where they have a, what do you call that? Where it's an open area where they have some trees and benches. And mm -hmm. um, uh, like in the backside. And I've been able to do it outside, but within the perimeter, and they roll them out in a chair. So mm -hmm. some of them have a way to accommodate, some don't. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, so I understand that there have been some problems with getting paid by family members. A lot of times they may give you a document like downstairs and you take the document into the jail and have it signed. And then um, uh, sometimes there's a different, you know, a, a hard time getting paid. Um, would it be like, bad customer service to tell them you need to be paid up front because you know they could have a lockdown a fight could jump out or anything and nobody goes nowhere you know yeah yeah i've never ever had a problem with payment first of all uh every single time i've been paid in full and typically it's paid in cash uh i don't take checks uh the second thing is it's it's fine if you're met at the facility they're giving you the document you know what it is you're going to do uh, you can say, okay, here's what the fee's going to be. I don't happen to do that. I wait till I come out because you know what? I got the document with me. They get the document when they pay me money. If they don't want to pay me money, I got the document. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't have an issue, first of all. But if you felt like there could be an issue, certainly you're already at the facility. You could say, uh, I give you back the document upon payment. So what do you do if, like I said, a fight breaks out and everything goes on lockdown, you know, because nothing moves then. If I'm inside, I'm going to be inside right. until the lockdown is lifted. Um, and, but then the, the, the document may not get notarized. So okay. what do you do? Then? So you know what? That's a big what if. It's never happened to me. It's not that it couldn't happen. And if it does, you're locked down. I mean, there is some inherent risk with going into that thing. But I can't tell you what's gonna happen because it hasn't happened to me. Yeah. So and I, I would say if all you think about is I might not get paid and what if I'm in lockdown and this is a scary place, this is probably not the line of work for you. No, I'm not afraid of it. Like I said, I worked in the jail at doing notaries for okay. inmates. Okay. But, um, but again, right. I know that there's a chance that if there's a lockdown, nothing can get notarized and, and I right. like I like getting paid in advance because if I decide to give them some of their money back, that's my decision. Okay, Donna, it's not a problem. Ask for it in advance. Yeah, that's I've had it fall deal. apart. Um, and what I do is I don't charge, I take off the notary fee and I charge them my travel that I estimated up front and that's what they pay me. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Great questions. And thank you, Laura, for uh, touching on the, uh, the COVID situation in facilities yeah. right now. All right, guys, we need some, if you have some questions, you got to raise your hand. I know we got a lot of chat activity happening there. Uh, Laura, can you walk them through how to raise their hand? Yes, if you go to the participant, uh, little icon at the bottom, and then you're gonna see three different icons, pick the raise hand, which I believe is on the right. There we go, looks like, oh, we got somebody who was just playing with it. Now we got a great question, Len Robergado, uh, in the chat window asked about the notary identification statement that lots of notaries get hung up on because it asked them to complete information about the notary. And then it also asks them for a notary seal, a copy of the, they want them to stamp the uh, document, even though it's not notarized, just to prove that they're an actual notary. And we know that this in most states is a no-no. Can you um, touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I, I don't know any states that it's okay. I don't know one state that it's okay to just put your seal on a piece of paper with, with, when you're not notarizing. So I would, I put either um, not legal or N slash A, or I just ignore it completely. And I fill out all the information they ask. There's nothing wrong with them asking for information about me. I don't have a problem with that at all, but I will not put my seal on it at all. Some notaries put their seal and strike a line through it. You know what? If that's your choice, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. What I'm going to tell you is 
I don't let them have my seal unless it's part of a notarization. That's my seal of office. It's only supposed to be utilized for certain purposes. Wonderful. Carol, did you have something on that? Yeah, I do. As a matter of fact, I, um, I suggest to my students, if they have the ability to print on labels, like little two by four labels, the Avery, that they print something that basically say, says I cannot place my seal on, the, on anything other than uh, uh, something I'm notarizing. Right. It is illegal, it could cost me my commission. That's very clear, it tells them exactly why you're not gonna do that. And if you print them on the labels, whenever that comes up, because it comes up very often, peel it off, stick it on, there it is. You're not gonna put your stamp on it. Beautiful, great suggestion, thank you. Harry, thanks for being here. Would you like to unmute? Tell us what state you're from and ask your question. Harry, I'll, I'll try unmuting you. There we go. Hey, Harry. Oh, Harry. Are Can you, you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, there you are. Okay. It should say Sandra. I don't know why it just says Harris. <laughs> oh, that's what, oh, there's supposed to be an S there. I'm calling you Harry. <laughs> Sandra, how's it going? Just fine. I'm in Tennessee, and Great. I was going to, I signed up for a particular signing company, and my bond is 10000 but they were asking for twenty five. Do you all ever run into anything like that, where they want your bond to be higher? Yeah, let's talk about that first. Um, and that, this may be for you, this may be for somebody listening, but let's clarify the difference between a bond and errors and omissions insurance. Because usually what people, uh, signing companies are asking for are E&O insurance, not the bond. Okay. So the bond is usually what maybe your state requires in order for you to become a notary public. And the bond protects your signers in case you make a mistake. And if you do make a mistake and they make a claim against your bond, you have to pay that back. Errors and omission insurance protects you against mistakes that you make. And it's totally separate. So there's a bond and then there's an E&O insurance policy. That is usually 25000 minimum to work with signing companies, so that's very common. Although we usually recommend if you're planning on really getting serious about the business and working direct with escrow officers or attorneys to get the $100,000 on E&O insurance. Did that help clarify your particular situation or is there still a request for a $25,000 bond? No, no, that answers it. All right, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Great question. I'm so glad you brought it up too, because there's so many questions. I see them in the forum all the time about that. So thank you for that. Yeah. Good I'd like question, to ask Harry. something, Bill, if I yeah. may. You bet. Uh, on the E and O, you're in right. When you, if your bond is attacked, uh, it's money that you have to put out. You're not going to get it back. With your errors and omissions insurance, anything. Let's say you're somebody sues you for five thousand dollars. You've got twenty five thousand dollars worth. What it does is it just lowers the amount of protection that you have from 25 to 20. You don't have to pay that money back. Excellent. Great. Thank you for that great question. Uh, I think it's Leilani Robinson. There's some missing, I think. Are you there? Or Leyland Robinson? Would you like to unmute? Tell us what state you're in and ask your question. Can you hear me okay? I'm yeah. in New York. All right. Hello. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails from this locate notary and this hire notary. I've tried to reach out to them and I've just got to a voicemail, not to anything. Has anyone? Yeah. Red flag right there. Yeah. No. Here's the thing. If you're, pro if you're being solicited via email, they, you got to be really leery of them. They all pro over promise, right? Oh, we have $150 signings in your area, unlimited business, and we never take a piece of the action. All it costs you is $39 a year, or some of them are even more like $300 a year. General rule of thumb is if you have to pay to play, do not play. Carol, I know you have big opinions on these. You want to share something on this one? Yeah, over the years, I've watched it 20 years. There's always somebody out to get your money. They come up with clever things. They promise you everything. 
um, just be very careful. Do your research before you give anybody even $10 because whatever you give them, it's going to be gone. And that new one, that higher notary and the locate notary, we all who have been around for a lot, we know for a fact that they're, they're just scammers. They just want your money. They're not going to give you anything in return. And there's a great resource for signing companies, for hiring companies, and even for the directories as well. And it's notaryreviews.org with Carrie Rivera. So what they do is they notaries will share their experiences on there. So if you're not part of that community, number one, you should be if you're looking for signing companies or hiring companies to work with. But they also have some information on the directories as well that might add some clarity to that. It also includes a community and a group so you can participate and you can see in live action, hey, this one's a scam or this one took my money and didn't do anything. Does that help you? That does. I mean, they've really kind of kicked up during COVID. So I just said I wanted to, I've been trying to research and you really don't find anything on them. So I tried to reach out to them and I thought Carol did touch base on one of them a few months ago in one of our meetings. Yeah. I yeah. just wanted to just definitely double check because you can't find anything good, bad, or indifferent. Just questions on, has anyone ever worked with them before? Yep, and that's that's usually a really and good indicator right there. To play. Yeah, there you go. Now that's a, that's a general rule of thumb, right? There's still very legit directories out there that are really great, but you can find information on them. So the indicator is if you Google them and there's nothing on there but their website talking about how great they are, and then three thousand people wondering if they're really that great to work with, that's a, a right. really red flag. And this is what this community is for. But also we have Gary Rivera as well. All right, great question. Thanks for bringing that up. Thank you. There's a lot of trainers out there that you've got to do a little research on before you sign up. Definitely. Well, due diligence, no matter what you're doing, is always highly recommended. Not All right. Bill. What's that? You're legit. <laughs> uh, Patty Jansen, thank you so much for being here. You want to unmute, tell us what state you're in, and ask your question. I'm in Oregon. And uh, one of the things on that notary stamp one, in Oregon, I just write prohibited in Oregon, and then I write the statute number in. But I like uh, Carol's idea of a little sticker. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, uh, three of my refis this week had um, a difference in cash to close from the uh, CD to the settlement statement. And, you know, I called title on one because it was like, almost two thousand dollars and and uh the signer had gotten his settlement statement two hours before the signing and she said yeah um just have them sign it and uh post final closing the loan officer will fix that but you know and then another one was a little over a thousand dollars and you know it was kind of the same thing but people are really uncomfortable and i'm just wondering is there is there a better way to handle that? I mean, post final closing is after the rescission date and, and they're wondering why do I have to sign something with inaccurate numbers? Why can't they write it on there or, or fix that, that papers? I mean, any suggestions on, on how to handle that? Yeah, a couple, and I'm sure um, both Carol and Laura have suggestions on this too. So for me, the first thing you have to realize is it's like signing a ticket, a traffic ticket. All it is is acknowledging receipt. And there's language right in there on both the settlement statement and the closing disclosure that say that. So that's usually the first one I go. But you are also, when there's a bit, let the, I let the borrower make the call. Is this a big deal? Is this a deal breaker? Do you wanna get your lender on the phone? Do you wanna call the closing agent? Should we get the clarity right now so they can hear it from the lender? It's not my job to close the loan for them. If, they, if they're uncomfortable with the numbers, I wanna put them in, in touch with the person that could clarify that for them. But then also, I also acknowledge this is this sometimes happens, especially because the remember who make who drafts the documents, closing agent uh, drafts the settlement statement. It's going to be sometimes more accurate than the closing disclosure. Closing disclosure is created by the lender, and the lender doesn't always have uh, up to date property tax information. They don't know the HOA dues specifically. They might know not know the uh, homeowner's insurance. Uh, information quite yet. So there's that's a lot of those variances are in there. But again, if the borrower really has a problem with it, 
I just put them in touch. We'd be that conduit of communication. And then Carol and Laura, I'd love to hear your, your ways of handling this as well. I remind them that it does say estimated uh, on it. Uh, and some of the things you just pointed out, Bill, I also point out that title may have access to the more up-to-date information than what was published you know, within 48 hours prior or 72 hours prior when they should have seen their closing disclosure uh, the first time. Uh, so, uh, and again, if they are concerned, I agree with Bill. Hook them up with their contact person. I agree with what both of you had to say, but I also want to say something else, and that's the closing disclosure. I am appalled that the rule is put out by the CFPB, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, that these CDs be provided to the borrowers 72 hours in advance of documents. That is not happening. I've been trying to encourage my graduates to actually call the hotline. There's a whistleblower's hotline with the CFPB. There's certain lenders that I won't mention that are notorious for getting those CDs to the borrowers at the last minute. They are not, they're just not even listening to this, the ruling or paying any attention to the law. And I think that we should start doing something about it. It's not fair to the borrowers. It's not fair to us. It's not fair to anybody that they break the law and don't get that information to the borrowers within that 72 hour or prior to that 72 hours before documents. I don't know how everybody else feels, but it just incenses me when my students call me and they say, well, I did a signing, but they never saw the CD until I brought it to them. Anybody have anything to say about it? <laughs> Well, I can say I'm not having that experience, and I um, I work with super OCD uh, closing agents, though, that make sure that, that they work in compliance, and I also know that a lot of borrowers think they haven't received things, but they've signed 3,000 documents yeah. since they start the loan process, so a lot of times when they're prompted, they'll re actually remember it. That's the experience I'm having anyway. Yeah, my experience is similar, and usually when I hold it up and I say, you should have seen this three days ago. Did you see this? And one will say, no, what's that? And the other one will say, yeah, we got it by email. Because they're, what they're doing is they're sending it by email, not by snail mail. And only one of them is looking at stuff. And of course, as Bill said, they got a million documents before then. I'm not saying that people are not getting it. I'm sure there are, there are signers that haven't gotten it in the right time frame. But my experience just in the last two months, because normally I don't do that much, but I've done a lot just in the last eight weeks, and every one of them, when I prompt them, you know, did you see this? If they weren't sure, I said, how about your email? Did you get something like this? Oh, yeah, that's right. They did send it to me. I didn't look at it. Okay. But it was sent to them. Right. Right. Great. Great question, Patty. Sparked a great conversation. Before I forget, there was something I was going to announce this morning. Uh, and that is because somebody just mentioned... Um, a company, what is it? Oh, shoot, hold on a minute. Um, hold on, because this is important. One of my students almost got lost a ton of work. Um, dang it, what's it called? I'm sorry, it was some... Uh, That's all right, you want to keep looking for it and we'll move on yeah, to... Yeah, I will, because this is important. I want people to know. You got it. Brandy Plummer, would you like to unmute and ask your question? Tell us what state you're from, too. Hi, Brandy, are you there? You are unmuted, so we should be able to hear you. All right, it sounds like you might be having technical difficulties. I'll mute you again. We'll try to come back to you. Dazzery Dyer. Hi, guys. Um, I am from Cal. Oh, can you hear me? Uh -oh. There you go. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Oh, wait, hold on. Let me. Hi, Brandy, we can hear you. Okay, good. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Um, so I wanted to see if. I'm from California, by the way. All right, Brandy, I'm so sorry, but you are yeah. got a bad connection. And, um, just to make a quick note, Brandy. I did just get my first signing service. I can't, I can't mute it either. Sorry, guys. 
Okay, there we go. Uh, sorry, Brandy, you're gonna have, we'll have to come back to you when you have better service. Dazzery Dyer, thank you so much for being here. Would you like to unmute and ask your question? Tell us what state you're in. Hello, my name is Dazery and I am in Florida. Hi. Um, my question probably has been answered before in the past on some one of these, but this is the first one I've really had an opportunity to be a part of. Um, I was wondering if anyone has any experience if they've if they're doing this already or if they've already started uh, looking up information for it. But I'm interested in a mobile printer slash scanner. Um, a lot of my appointments are 45 minutes to sometimes an hour away. So after I take, let's say, one to two hours with the refinance, now I have to drive another 45 minutes to an hour to get back to my scanner. And then I finally scan and email it. And then, oh, by the way, I would like to do more work today. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll <laughs> you know, tell you. Daisy. Yeah, this is um, the, the rise of the mobile office is upon us. Lots of notaries having full on mobile setups in their car. If you're on this call and that is you, would you please uh, maybe post either your contact information or some of your resources or your favorite scanner that works in your car or your favorite printer that works in your car in the chat window so Daisy can see that. Also, Daisy, I can tell you that with inverters and power sources, you can have regular printers and um, scanners in your vehicle as well. And there's lots of those. Some of those are right on my YouTube channel. Uh, okay. Scan for uh, scanners and printers. If you just type that into the search bar, my favorites, a lot of them, the brother printers, the HB, HP, everybody will have a different perspective in your weather and your temperature uh, in the summertime will play a big role in that too. Uh, look, there's already some awesome suggestions coming into the chat window there for you. Thank Bill, you. I, I just thought it. of what I wanted yeah. to say. Great. Okay. Thank you, Beasley. Go for it, Carol. Oh, okay. Uh, anybody who works for ServiceLink, I've got. To, I have to tell you, I have a. I had a graduate who was making thousands of dollars every month from ServiceLink. It was his main customer. He got into a trouble, almost lost the business because he was using Notary Act, which I love. I know the owner well that created it. It's a great, uh, a great journal. It's in the sky. Service Link has issued, uh, especially letting me know that they will not let anybody use Notary Act. And if you are and you're doing it on Service Link uh, uh, signings, stop it right away. You could lose that business. Did they tell you why? They don't like it in the cloud. They want paper. They want regular journals. Oh, so they just, it's not Notary Act, the company. It's just electronic journals. Any also. electronic journals. And okay. of course, Notary Act is really out there. They're great. I wanted everybody to know that if and they're no, working with no them. Cell phones on. Great. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, yeah. No cell phones on when you're in a signing. Thanks. Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> I'm quiet. All right, great. Thank good. Good to know. Thank you. I Hank, thank you so much for being here. Would you like to unmute and ask your question? Don't forget to tell us what state you're in. Yes, Bill. Hi. How you guys doing? Okay. Good. Uh, and in New York, um, I had a question. Uh, maybe Laura can help me with this. Um, it was for a loan modification. They just give me a sample of a uh, assumption doc. It has the borrower's name. Then it says known to me or prove to me on the oath of blank. And then the next line is or through blank. Now the or through blank, it says description of ID card. I understand that part. But the part where it says prove to me on the oath of, I'm not sure what to put in that blank. Your credible witness. If you use one. Right, if you didn't, it'd be N slash A. So it's one or the other is filled out. So, I, uh, you um, you kind of faded out on me with that that answer. So it's one or the other. Either you had a credible witness for the first blank, or you had ID in the second blank. Okay, credible witness. Okay, because the the second one was obvious. It says description right. of ID, so I knew that, but I didn't know what to put where it says to me. Uh, so is this considered just a, a acknowledgement only with an oath? 
No, the oath is for the credible witness. That's for identification. And that could be in a juret or that could be in an acknowledgement. It's not specific. This is identification process. Okay, so just pick one of them and go with the one. And go with the one. Yeah, this is in place of the word satisfactory evidence. Oh, okay. Thank you. And you don't, use, you, you, know, you don't use the oath of a person. You don't use a credible witness unless you have to. Right. So if they, if they didn't, weren't able to provide ID and you couldn't get there, then you could do the oath. So you just put, I don't know if you heard that in the beginning, Hank, but you put N slash A, so not applicable mm -hmm. in that oath section if you're not going to use it. Okay, and then go with the ID part. Just put the, right. I, the description of the ID you got or, it. without numbers. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Thank you, right, Great question. Thank you, guys. Guys, can you believe we have already gone through an hour? We're going to have to wrap it up right now uh, and call it a day. We've got some background noise somewhere. But we're going to go ahead and wrap up anyway, guys. Thank you so much for growing yourself and your business on the Tuesday. Carol, Laura, thank you so much for being here. Really love our time together. Guys, we'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.